everything from Grand Pyramidas to, I don't know, Vijique and all kinds of things. But anyway, why don't we go ahead and cut the, Let's grand, do that. the uh, Pyramidas Extra now. Oh, the Pyramidas Extra. Okay, guys. So the Pyramidas Extra is killer. It yes. is one of my favorite Habanos because it's got that great sweetness and the mellowness that a Cuban cigar commands, but it's stronger. So it, it's got a good mouth experience as you go through there. Here you go, sir. So, oh, oh my God, I love, I just love the bands, the way, the way they just glisten in the light. It's, it, it, it looks like pure gold. It's and the smell. Okay. Uh, Mr. Muto, may I ask one thing before we get started? How old are these cigars that we're smoking right here? Yeah, yeah. That, these here are from 2018. 2018. So they've been aging since. They've been aging for three years on top yeah. of whatever they made. Yeah. So how long are they normally aged for? Well, it would depend. I mean, the cigar came out years ago. I have to, I don't know the exact year, but. Uh, Thank you so much. Doing this. I find the bigger the cigar, the longer it needs to age. It makes common sense, right? <laughs> I mean, it's more tobacco, right? There's so many jokes uh, I could do in there. <laughs> you know, I have no clue. But these are just a real treat if you like uh, Cohiba. Cohiba's a very strong line. Real quick, I don't mean to cut you off. So what cut would you use for this? Okay, I always cut, cut. I never use anything but a straight cut. Straight cut is always good. Because the typical cutter like this is already gauged. As most of you know, you just simply yeah. lay it down, put the cigar in vertically. Yeah, yeah. Cut, cut it, it's gauge to cut the exact amount off of triple cap cigar. Yeah. And for instance, this is a pyramid of extra, so it has a point. What I do is take the same cutter and I'll put my finger where I want it. That way my cutter rests on it and yeah. just cut it off. And you want to take off about five sixteenths, three eighths of an inch. And it's not going to hurt it if you take a little bit more. It's not going to unravel on you or anything like that. So isn't it true you learned your vast cigar cutting uh, knowledge from your previous career as a moil? As a what? A moil? <laughs> It's the, say a, moil? a moil. You have to say something that the audience is going to know what the hell you're talking The about. Jewish doctors who cut the nips off the tips. I'll have a video for you on that if you like to see. <laughs> yeah, that's all I said. I, I thought that's easy. I was like, dude, are you serious? This guy needs help, all right. man. So what I want to point out, you're not going to be able to see this, but the uh, the wrapper itself has this amazing leather quality. It shines like yeah, leather it does, shines. It does shine. And it's got, it's got uh, not – it's almost like you see this layer – of, of, of dust on the wrapper as you turn it in the light but that's that's the crystallized yeah, that would be juice. your plume that's it's uh it's that, very yeah. very faint but it looks it looks like uh yeah. like on a, on a cathode ray tube television how that always be that little faint layer that's a, but you can tell that this cigar uh, is aged like just by looking at it but all the cigars in the collection and the uh, are, are aged um even more, some so, of them you can, you have can excreted see. so much oil that when you pick up one cigar, two cigars come up. I mean, they're just yeah, stuck yeah. together. They, they think these black streaks that smell like resin. It's so hot. <laughs> okay, parents. <laughs> it's so, hot. It's so hot. That's hot, yo. <laughs> what am I gonna do with these people? Uh, now you know I didn't come on the show for so long. <laughs> it's like I, I send in messages left and right. You need to straighten up your act, and this is where we end up. Oh my god! Oh, this cigar is heaven. Oh my god, dude! I don't know first live about. show back after COVID, and I'm smoking a freaking Cohiba, dude. That's amazing. Oh, you're spoiled. And, and the dry pull, rich cedar. Oh uh, no, I'm no, sorry, pine, pine, pine is a cheap note, and you don't get that kind of dry pull from a, a, a New World stick. It's only uh, Habanos. I'm gonna touch mine up when you. Uh, get done with your so gentlemen uh tell us tell us what flavors you're initially picking up and then we'll uh we'll move on to some other cool topics okay so i lost my sense of taste. i've been slowly getting it back by like adding little oh. subtleties into like things that i've been making like for me to eat dude you're gonna have to give me a second it's gonna take you it's, it's gonna take me a little bit longer than you guys if you watch the show you'll know this i've never done this ever in the show's history where I'm wafting the cigar just to smell it. But that's because <laughs> those weren't pure meat Yeah. This is, oh. Uh, it's like the creme de la creme. This is the, it, this it, is, this is the, this is the one you try to achieve. Yeah. You, all right. You, you try to eat your cigars I, find that I, I can't really ascertain the taste until I'm about a half an inch into a cigar. Yeah. You know, because the edge of the cigar, the foot of the cigar 
the amount of humidity in it versus it's all the dynamics are completely different. But once you get through about a half an inch of a cigar like this, then it really starts to set in and the excitement. The, the smoke is so fine and so mellow. Like I just retrohaled it and it had almost no recognition in my sinuses. Like it didn't have a burn. It, but as mild as it was, it has it this mild. finish. It has a finish that yeah, comes in real creamy and caramel. It does. And it's, it's just like, wow, how do you get such a sweetness? But at the same time, you know, a real lightness of the smoke. Normally you have to have a, a, a heavier smoke to have that much flavor, but it really is. For, and, and Muto, for me, I, I think rum actually pairs really well with this. So good call on the rum. Oh, yeah. We're drinking rum, by the way, uh, Cuban rum. Because why why not if you're going to have like the fish the fish Cuban experience yeah. you know you want to you want to do it right um, yeah. like we didn't have a notice to bring like the this. prostitutes though we were working on that <laughs> we said official did you just say that yes he did he did That's you know hilarious. what we're gonna have to take his show from him one day just, just <laughs> grab the mic and make him chase after you. You gotta remember, he's a comedian too. Oh, dude. God, I can't, ever. I can't wait till we do a show from Cuba because that's gonna happen, folks. Mm. No, that is gonna happen. The best he will be in a Cuban prison for at least five years. Oh, oh. We're, we are definitely doing the show. Here. Should we? Okay, all right, fellas. So listen up. December 11th for the UFC when Dustin is fighting for the belt. John and I will be there. We're going to Vegas, and we, we, we got a little group coming with us, and we're we can't have one fantastic. Of our own. Going for a belt. Oh my God! We're gonna go. We're, not, we, we're gonna go to the Casa Fuente store. We're uh -huh. gonna go to the Davidoff store. We're gonna go to the Monte Cristo store, and we're gonna cut an episode somehow. And oh no, we are. We're doing. It. And we're and we're probably gonna smoke some Davidoff Royals <coughs> just yeah. because we're bougie little bitches that way. And Spencer's gonna be like, "Bring me back something nice," because <laughs> he already asked. So he can just look there with the look at us with the I didn't say that. You totally said. That. Uh, okay. uh, Spencer, by the way, says, anyone realize that Alex looks like Borat? <laughs> <laughs> that's not nice. That's not nice. Uh, that's hilarious. <laughs> okay, so now that we've discussed the preliminary notes of the cigar, how did you get to be where you are as far as, like, so knowledgeable about Cuban cigars? Well, I've been smoking cigars for about... 30 years, I suppose. And when I was living in Florida, I was on Craigslist and I didn't know anything about Cuban cigars. And of course, I look on Craigslist, there's a box of Espanditos, $200. I'm like, I gotta go get that. So I would drive down to Miami and I go give the guy the $200 and I'm back in my house and my next door neighbor who happens to be Cuban. Was there sand in him? Sees me smoking it and he tells me, he says, Yuma, which is like what the Mexicans call you, uh, it's kind of a derogatory term. It he is? Says, yeah. Yuma, uh, he says, uh, that's fake. And I'm like, what? What do you mean? I didn't know they counted. Like, sir, I got that off of a very reputable Craigslist. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and he said, he yeah. said it was legit. He gave it to me this glass he box. Says, that looks like this. He said, that's, that's a bad fake, too. You should know better. So I felt like a total idiot. And of course, at the time, uh, the Obama administration had re re uh, relaxed the travel restrictions to Cuba. And opened up the cruise lines and all this stuff. So it was like 175 dollars to go to Cuba. And I said, let's go to, I'll just go to Cuba and get them from Cuba. Must be nice to have that kind of wealth where you're like, I don't know which of these stores to go over. So fuck it, I'll just go to the country. I'll just be like, Wait. well, I was that the proximity helped as well, you know. And uh, the amount of travel time from Fort Lauderdale to into the airport in Cuba was like two and a half hours. So I was like, we go there. So I went and uh, of course I had networked myself with some other people there and a good friend of mine. Carlitos, how are you? Um, he introduced me to probably the most powerful people in the Habanos Corporation the day I got there. And I was just like flabbergasted. I didn't even know what in the world I was involved with, right? But they just treated me so welcoming and uh, very heartwarming. And they educated me on Habanos. So from that point forward, I was just totally enthralled by it. And I fell in love with the culture, everything to do with the culture. And especially when it comes to cigars, I, I thought I kind of had some knowledge. You think you know about cigars? You don't know diddly squat. People who think they know about Cuban cigars, they don't know diddly squat about Cuban cigars. They, especially here in this country, unfortunately, because of the uh, embargo, you know, we haven't had much here. <laughs> but anyway, you don't know. I, every day I learn something new, you know? I mean, I was on a website last night in England 
and they actually have the cigars that came in each one of these, which are millennium edition jars. They have the cigars in their vault. So I'm like, how do I get those cigars? I got to have them because obviously those have been smoked, but they won't ship to the U.S. And now I've got to get one of you guys who've had your vaccination to fly to England for me and fit my stuff. But anyway, I'm kind of getting off on a tangent there. I, I, I know you're going off on a tangent right now, but I, I, I want to bring you back in. So as somebody who's like, listen, I want, I want those cigars. How do I keep them for that long? And and to have them in a collection like you have. Well, I have the Reagan humidors, which are you know, well, yeah, very high can you, end. Can you explain that to our audience? Because it's, it's a climatically I, I controlled humidor that emits both humidity and cooling and heating. So it, it'll keep it at optimum temperature and optimum humidity as long as you replenish the water in it. And it'll do that indefinitely as long as you have electricity and you don't have a, an equipment bill. So uh, they've been sitting in there just aging and aging. If you keep them, I don't like 70-70 because the range, if, it, if you bump up too high above that 70, you can get into a danger zone, especially with mold, right? It doesn't take that especially much. Especially here in Louisiana. Yeah, so I keep my stuff at about 65 degrees and about 65% humidity. And like when I started to smoke with you guys, I just bumped it up a couple hours ahead of time on the humidity. I kept the temperature the same. And then it's perfect to smoke, as you can see. So, but you learn that everything you learn is from mistakes, you know. And this, you know, oh, when it comes to, I don't want to hear right? that when it comes well, to mistakes. Well, it is, it is, it, because I've had cigars, I've had these Bihikis, which are uh, $175 cigar, explode in the humidor because I didn't know what I was doing, where I positioned them, and the, the, the air is blowing on them too much. And you just learn, you know, from mistakes, yeah. and it's like you cringe. What's funny is, is you mentioned. You know, always learning something and i i've seen you know you work in action identifying cigars and just going off and it's one of the reasons why i enjoy hanging out with you is because there are that many people that genuinely like teach me stuff and i really really like that and i got to see you in action earlier this year when the foundation leak happened at your place because you had to work hand in hand with the insurance company to like and not only fix the damage and remediate all the issues, but also make sure that this massive Cuban cigar collection didn't get destroyed in the process. And they're so delicate, you know, they've been aging so many years and they're so dependent on their, their conditions that any perturbation can have disastrous effects. And I got to watch that in real time where one of the pieces of equipment they used to, to pull the moisture out of the air was too close to one of the Reagans and actually pulled air out from the bottom of it. And oh. It caused yeah, yeah, like yeah. the whole bottom row to get totally desiccated. Yeah. But in this really, really weird way, he sh was showing them to me. That's right. I'm one of the only human beings on the planet who's seen his human cigar collection, and it is. Yeah, I haven't even seen it. And I've been friends with you. I don't. I don't really share it with people. Yeah, I don't blame you. because it, it would make me uncomfortable. The yeah, value is substantial, yes, and uh, but what we wanted and, to do. And the time you pissed me off, I did think about killing him and just stealing the <laughs> Uh, but Alex is absolutely right. Had we not been to my home, we just happened to be out partying, he and I, and I was like, dude, let's go by the house and pick up a cigar. You know, they're doing all the work in the house. And we walk in and peruse the place. And then I'm, we open the humidor and I look at the bottom and they were desiccated, which is, uh, it's almost like they're imploding from being yeah. dehydrated, right? I'm like, they look like an 80 year old's knuckles, like the way it was withdrawn over yeah. it. It's weird. So, see, th th this is some of this shit you do is when you articulate, you, you, you paint such a picture, you're just like, ew, ew. And you're like, wait, no, not the cigars, man. Because we love this. We love cigars. And it's like, thank you for painting a picture. But fuck you for also painting yeah. a picture. <laughs> well, anyway, long story short. So we opened it up and Alex is like, you know, it was only on the two bottom shelves. There's seven shelves in the humidor. And uh, I was like, that, that I was so angry because I, I should have been there when they put the machine in. But this is a very, it's a commercial, it's called an air scrubber, dehumidifier. Yeah. It's a commercial machine, and it would suck a golf ball through a garden hose, basically, right? And they placed it, even though the humidors were locked, they placed it so Locked close that it sucked those doors open just enough to evacuate all the air and humidity. So I checked the reservoirs, and they were bone dry. And they'd only set this thing up two hours beforehand. I'm telling you, if, it, if we wouldn't have gone by there, we would be talking about the most, probably one of the most valuable collections in the United States completely destroyed, and them having to pay a claim because you're my lawyer. <laughs> Uh, but he's anyway, having to hide a body because he's a killer. <laughs> oh, he called a magician. <laughs> so anyway, Alex and I, uh, he, we're like, he's like, dude. So I called the company, and I'm like, you need to come get this machine away from these things. It should be placed on the opposite end of the house, which I did for them. And uh, 
then I replenished the, the reservoirs, and within about 48 hours, they came right back to their pristine condition. Thank God. We were scared. Oh, oh we were so oh, nervous. Well, yeah, that have been? Oh, well, just on the two bottom shelves, well, one, just one stack is the uh, Romeo and Julia Grand Reserve. That cigar is about $500 a piece, and there's about 300 of them there, so you can do the math. That's just on that one shelf, and then there was the Fabulosa. It was significant. Yeah, it so would have been into the tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I kind of know what you guys are talking about, because like, I know this is not even close to being the same. Mm -hmm. So in my house, I have a, a piano, um, and I used to have a house in uh, El Paso, Texas. And it's so dry there. It's crazy. That when I brought the piano from there to here, the sound it just opened up and like all the keys that were all bad and kind of like were you know, frumpy, like when you hit them, opened up and the sound just became amazing. Right. And so like I, I know it's the same, like you, you pull something away and you put it in this kind of humidity, and it's boom, it comes right back. Well I had a I had a nightmare. I had a nightmare. I was like, oh my God, these these people are jacked up this whole thing right can you imagine being in litigation for four or five years trying to resolve this you, oh what's the point but anyways uh so that's why i was i was there three times a day from that point forward documenting everything and trying to keep it in i did end up with very 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 mild just a couple little pieces it's so small you can barely see it but i have a uv light that detects mold and uh and looking at them out of roughly twelve thousand seven just a teensy bit of mold that had begun so what that what so happened with that what well, that machine when it sucked on the doors the argon gas that's between the glass panes it broke the seal and it was just enough so i didn't know i didn't know until i went and did another inspection and then i'll, I'll move on so real quick. The, the, the moral of the story is that it's a heart attack having a collection like that I mean, yeah, I, yeah that's what sucks it's like having a newborn baby constantly it, it's because i'm watching him his, there was his normal level of like stress, and then when that happened, it was just like any day I was expecting to be like, eh, who's in the hospital? I had a heart attack. Okay, you know, so, like, okay. in prison. <laughs> so, okay, so let's, let's take that away. Let, let, let's let our audience understand why you would age those kind of cigars and take the chance on doing what you do. Well, let's back up a little bit. So, when I started going to Cuba and I met this person with the Habanos Corporation. They invited me to the factory to roll my own cigar. So yeah. I was like, this is so cool, but you're not supposed to film it, but they let us film it. And I'm, I'm just, you know, it's August, I'm sweating like, a, you know, whatever. And um, the, this is the top roller in Cuba. I didn't realize it at the time that I'm rolling a cigar with. So I kind of I kind of jack it up and he takes it, he fixes it, it's yeah, perfect. It <laughs> and uh, anyway, so I'm gonna call this guy C because in Cuba I don't want to name anyone. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a exactly. communist country and I don't know what kind of ramifications. So C for communist. Yeah. Anyway, a communist friend. Um, he asked me if I could bring nebulizers. And it's just a little breathing machine at like $35 on Amazon. And if I could bring those, the top roller, it's his grandchild that uh, there's this Saharan dust that blows over the island and it exacerbates the pulmonary issue, the lung issue. And they needed those nebulizers. Why? Socialized medicine. Thank you. <laughs> So anyway, he asked me if I could bring two. I go price them on Amazon. They're like 35 bucks. I'm like, screw it. I just buy a whole suitcase full. So I brought like 10 of them and uh, brought it in. And we went to a party at their house. And there was all these influential people there. And at the end of the night, they had taken those humidors out of that piece of luggage and replaced it completely full with Cuban cigars. And I was like, this is not fair. It's not, I mean, one, I didn't want anything for bringing it. It was an act of donation, kindness, I guess you could call it. Uh, they were like, you don't know how much this means. And it just broke my heart that they can't even get a simple little nebulizer machine. They can get That's it. That's ridiculous. Yeah, right. Yeah. And they gave me about about $60,000 in cigars for a $350 gift. And uh, so I'm like, hey, man, how do I, how do you expect me to get this shit out of the country? You know? He says, remember earlier tonight, you had the lady here with customs? I said, well, yeah. He said, well, she's going to bring you the papers. So you take those papers and when you go there, if you have a problem, you ask for her. I'm new. I don't know shit about this. It's like my third week in Cuba. So I go through the Cuban airport. No one even stops me. I get to Fort Lauderdale. Then they stop me. Of course. And this was a real interesting story. So customs uh, in this country is really kind of, it's a government operation. I'm going to move on real quick, but I got to just finish up real quick. So <laughs> there's a suitcase full of cigars and the lady's like, you know, you can't bring this into the country. 
I said, don't you work, no, do you realize you work for the State Department? She said, of course I do. I said, well, perhaps you should go on their website right now and read all of the website. I said, what it says is that I can uh, bring duty-free 100 cigar, Cuban cigars a month, duty-free. I said, in excess of that is 4% based on what you think I paid for them in Cuba. And these were given to me. I said, so what are we going to do? Well, her boss is behind his head. He just nodded his head because he couldn't stand it. <laughs> and he's just like, you know, no problem. He comes back and he says, how about 90 bucks? I said, I hire me. It's 100 and I'm out of here. And he goes, no, you can't leave. i got to give you 10 bucks back. But anyway, long story short, I, I, you know, do your homework. Do your homework because so many Americans are misinformed about how all this works. They think you can't go to Cuba right now. There's never been a time in history where Americans could not go to Cuba. I know. Yeah, I agree. You know, it's utterly ridiculous. So it's a bunch of mis misinformation and misconception. They fix the food on top of that. No. Anyways, so... No, but it's been a great experience. So I started, they, they were, I, dude, they had me bring a swimming pool. I brought all kinds of stuff to these people. Doll, uh, um, uh, stuff for animals. Did you wear like a red suit and a gray beard? Kind of, right? With a big sack. Uh, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of L's working in that, that airport. Oh my God, if y'all ever fly into the Cuban airports, they're like all 22 year old girls with push up bras and lace stockings. And it's like, I was like, this is like a porno here, man. It's a trip. You're like, I got contraband. <laughs> hey, Lindsay <laughs> said, it's so jelly about the trip. In my butt. <laughs> so, yeah, and I, we, we all wish we could go there. Because I mean, well, can, anybody can imagine can. having this. Anybody can. And I'll tell you what's really interesting about the country is even the Cubans don't know. They all think they know, but you know, they keep these people separated, kind of what they're doing in the world, right? Keep yourself separated from everybody. Why? Because if you're not talking to one another, you can't communicate, you can't communicate, you can't educate. That's the way I look at it. Well, a girl I was traveling with brought a deck of cards just so we could pass the time, right? And they seized them and they told her, you're lucky that's five years in jail because it's considered gambling. And I'm like, oh shit. You know, I have the deck too, so I, put, I gave it to her. No, but uh, <laughs> do 10 years, I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> While you're there. But I didn't know that, right? And uh, like when you go through the airport, they have these signs about like psychotropic drugs, Xanax, shit like that. You can't bring that into the country. Why? Drugs, because they, I'm no, not, you, you have to ask them that. that I'm yeah, not here yeah. for that. Well, yeah. I'm just saying I was really just surprised that it was so different from America uh, and other places I've traveled being that it's communism. Okay, well, I want to draw attention now that I got like an inch into this one. There's something to be said about Cuban cigar ash, okay? And that needs to be addressed. Most cigars, uh, especially New World Sticks, when you smoke, they give off more of a whiter ash, a brighter colored ash, but yet the characteristic appearance of Cuban cigar ash is this mottled dark gray. It can even get black in a lot of regions, but but really it's just a darker, like the, like the uh, sharpness and the colors are just turned way down. Also, you get like a real pronounced uh, stacking of layers of ash. It looks like a stack of pancakes. Uh, I, I, I don't see that quite as heavy with New World Sticks. I don't really understand why. I get the colors just because there's different chem uh, compounds yeah, yeah, in the yeah, ground. There's, there's, there's a little lack of magnesium. Yeah, so that's yes. that is, but, the, but the but the fact that you know it looks like it's got these real vibrant striations uh, and it holds together. Really, so really what? Well. So so I mean, you guys are like my. I I, I reach out to you guys every time I want to have a question. Right? So what's the difference between this and Nicaraguan leaves? I don't know. Because I, don't know. I, mean, I, I sound like a snob, and probably because I am. Um, but I'm since I've have all these Cuban cigars, why do I need to even look at any other cigar? And I know that may sound offensive or whatever to some people, but I've told Alex, when people give me cigars, I give them, I re-gift that. He gives them to me. Because I'm like, what? what well, hey, right here. He, gave, he gave me this like hundred dollar Zeno this Platinum. Is, John is like, I'll take it. This is my thing. No, I want you to make something crush. It, it was the I island of it. Cuba that when Christopher Columbus there, that's when the distribution of cigars throughout the world began. Yeah, because they, yeah, they, they started trade, they traded it. They right, so they're the experts, and there's a great website if you guys want to go to it. It's called uh, cubanwebsite.com. Well, Cuban, is it Cuban website? I think it's Cuban website. I'll, I'll look it up in a minute. But it, there is a plethora of information about everything pertaining to Cuban cigars. They just revamped the site. It's so 
awesome. It's amazing. It's like an encyclopedia about it. To answer your question about Nicaragua versus Cuba, uh, one of the things is that Cuba, I believe, is a island of coral formation, and Nicaragua is land that is volcanic. Okay. And so you're going to have to make sure the audience is not. I'm, I'm asking for them. <laughs> so the, that's that's the the, the, the the composition of the soil is very very different. But Nicaragua, I think, is one of the closest regions to the latitude longitude of Cuba. The conditions being the air and the, the sunlight concentrations. So uh, a lot of people think Nicaragua is like top to top with Cuba as far as like greatest sugar production. And the world. and there are a lot of people who favor Nicaragua. And those people, I just think, have its own problems. The one thing I wanted to mention real quick, because yeah. I kind of stuttered on it, was uh, the website is cubancigarwebsite.com. Go there. It's a plethora of information. But, John, what I wanted to say to answer your question from what I've ascertained with all this is that when Castro went in there with the revolution, yeah. a lot of these people that were private companies with these uh, all the different brands in Cuba, they hightailed it out of there. So they all went to South America. Well, they, not all of them, but they, went, they dispersed throughout the world, predominantly South America. So you had... Nicaragua, Honduras, and other places. Uh, and they brought some seeds with them. So now you'll see like non Cuban seed. Well, but it's Cuban seed. So they all want that attachment, I think, or that correlation because, to Cuba. And the because instance. I think that's where the, like the bar has been set. It, yeah, it pretty much is the epitome. Now, I'm not saying other cigars aren't awesome. I was a Macanudo, a Puente guy way before I got involved with Cuban cigars. So I love other cigars. I just, I'm like, why do I need to smoke that when I've got to smoke all this stuff? You know, if I get rid of Alex, I have so many more cigars to smoke. <laughs> hey, I'll be a friend. Hey, you are, you know you are. So, uh, but it's very interesting. So I was reading this on this site, um, in fact, yesterday, how they talked about the migration out of the country from these guys. And that's how you ended up with these international brands. So a lot of people think the Monte Cristo brand, when you buy it here, is Cuban cigar. It's not. They're just descendants of the people that owned the brand at one time. Same thing with uh, Romeo and Julieta and H. Cohiba and H. Up and all these brands. So it's really uh, cool. All right. So uh, I'm a, I, I know I know we're bleeding this thing because there's so much stuff we can talk about, especially when you were talking about here. But you listen, can do something Let Look, look I, and, and I have to speak for the audience. What and how can people tell the difference between whether – because most people don't understand when we're smoking from your stash, we're smoking the real deal. You know what I mean? And then there's people out there who sell these things that are saying, oh, no, it's real. It's real. I got it from this site. And I, I put them in my pack. And both. And then they smoke these things. And they think that that's a real Cuban scar. It's not. Right? Okay. So before he gets into that, so that, that question, right, we're going to have it back. This is just the first episode well, of the I, mini I, 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 where we're going to cover all sorts of Cuban topics. And one of those topics will be about the anti counterfeit measures and the bans and how you can kind of tell the difference. So we're, I'm it's just kind of like that's a taste. It's, it's, it's every, because if I smoke this is or I smoke one from our friend that we all know who I'm talking about, I smoke this and I smoke one from our friend and you can immediately taste the difference. Well, you know what I mean? Like Again, re let's revert to where we started this conversation. I'll tell you how I bought counterfeit cigar, uh, Cuban cigars. Well, in I think Florida. we were all for our audio, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, know I think we mentioned that. No, we, we were back around. Okay, okay. And so that's kind of going all the way back to how this all started. And I had no idea the massive, it's multi billions that, that is the counterfeit industry and pertaining to just Cuban cigars. I believe the numbers. Is that the total uh, Cuban cigar industry is ten times bigger than the actual Cuban cigar yeah. production, which tells you but that ninety percent of all Cuban cigar sales are counterfeit. Which is why I'm trying to bring this up. Like smoking this. But everybody says the other rules. Hold on, hold on. Smoking this and then smoking one from our friend. Uh -huh. We all know who I'm talking about. Yeah. It's it's night and day. It's you know what I mean. Like, well, let's talk about it. We're all fairly into our our sticks now. The, the, we're almost at the business end. You know, I'm so like, proud of y'all. Look at those ashes. Yeah, I, I'm not gay, but nice ash. I mean, I'm holding it straight up like I was yeah. taught because it not only is it beautiful, but the, the, the air, I haven't had to touch it up once. But here's the thing: it's just it's it's actually it burns perfect. Burns perfect it's, because it's been aged properly. Yeah. Well, you know what, what happens? Mean? You know, John, when you have the binder and the filler and the wrapper, and they excrete these oils through this period of time right and a, a Cuban cigar to me if it's on the shelf check the date on it if the date is recent the production date 
park it in your humidor for a year. Let it just sit there. You know, it's going to ferment. That's what you want. And then those oils blend together. So when these oils all mix, that's right? What people tell me. It is yeah, true. That, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's why you don't age so Very cigars. sensitive. Yeah. So you have to age a minimum six months. You know, people talk about, like he's told me. Especially we, if you're spending this We've money smoked on cigar. cigars that he had had before. He was like, you know, I didn't like this when I first smoked it because it was it was and immature. It but then you age it and the, the flavor characteristics change profoundly. And I would say out of all the sticks I've ever smoked, Cuban cigars are the ones that benefit the most from aging, where they go from being like kind of kind of hard to resolve all the different flavors to like this is the greatest thing ever. I, I don't understand why their region has that effect, but I want to point out that the, the thing that I always tell people separates a Cuban cigar from the rest of the world is in its ability to have a native sweetness to the leather. It's, oh. it's not like oh. a sweet cigar. It's really leathery. It's got a good nuttiness to it. But yeah, yeah, the leather yeah. always has a high note on the finish where it's, like, it's not bitter leather. It's not acrid leather. It's, it's this high, sweet leather. And it is absolutely and you get a taste for it mm -hmm. every other cigar disappoints yeah. because none of them give you that note except the cuban cigar and and then and so once you once you train yourself on those notes you can identify a real or a fake one as soon as you taste it as well no i know I know, I know i know we can because i i mean look who my friends are like i mean like come on <laughs> i'm privileged to see and and be mentored by the best you know what I mean? So when I run into people who are like who are selling these things, I'm just like, you know, and they're asking me to like kind of BS somebody who they're trying to sell to. I'm like, I can't. That why do you think I'm so cold? I, and I don't mean to be like rude, but I'm just like, I won't do it. Like I'm like, you put my name out there. I'm not doing that for you. Right. Number one. Number two, like when you smoke the real deal, this is like so different than what they're trying to push on people. And that's what I want our audience. To, to see is like, you know, don't get scammed. Right. Don't, 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 don't let this happen. To you. There's a reason why. There's a reason. Exactly. The price, and that they the fetch. price too. That's uh, true. And, the, and to your point earlier, the, the people that hooked me up with most of this collection, they all went to Pinar del Rio, which is yeah. the most pristine region in the world to get all this tobacco. You know, it was really neat because they would like call me. You know, my plantation, they would send me photos. And it's just like, oh my God. So, like, all the Bihike is just the top two leaves off of these plants. Can you imagine it? Just the top two. That's it. That's what yeah, you get. Crazy. I know. And then, even yeah. when the bang gets fucked up, they're like, ah, oh, I'm throwing that away. After they went through all that process. Oh, it's like, it's just the band was I don't up. just save any band, but I save my Habanos. That's what I'm saying. Absolutely. Like, it's, it's crazy. You, but here's a perfect segue, though. Spence, I, I'm sorry, I got to bring you in on this one. So what would be the cigar merchants' top cigars that you'll be like, eh, you might want to age that a couple months or six to preserve so you get the best out of that cigar that you're smoking? I already know what he's going to say. Yeah. Oh, he's going to get it. He's, he's coming yeah. in. He's hey, coming in. He's coming Spencer's in. coming in hot. Hey, Ladies and gentlemen, Spencer. Hey, guys. First off, I want to thank you for being here. Thanks, Andre. Nice. Thank um, you for the invitation. Good to have you back, John. I'm glad I'm here. Yeah. So, so actually, ideally with any cigar, because cigars are transported in a variety of conditions, and oftentimes companies will ship them a little wetter. Uh, honestly, ideally, you wanna you'll wanna age any cigar you buy out of the humidor for a couple like for from a, for at least a couple weeks to three even to six months just to get the optimal smoke. Now, I mean, it's not a necessity. You'll still get for most of these cigars, you're gonna get a good experience regardless. But um, typically with a lot of your, with the color of the wrapper, if it's like a Rosado or a little bit lighter, um, like a sun, like a Sun Ground or a Connecticut, you're going to want to age those probably about three, three months, six months or so to get the optimum flavor. It's like a Davidoff, those Padron Naturals, um, some of those uh, New World uh, Monte Cristos, like the Epic. Oh, yeah, my boss uh, has been speaking a lot of that. He's like, I love New World. New Worlds are the way to go. A lot of way guys like New Worlds. Yeah, and that, he's a compatibility with them. Now, some cigars like Liga Pravati don't really want to age. No, they are, they are like, mm, right lot, when you get them. A lot of those Maduras are already at the peak of their age already. So as long as you know, they're adjusted to the temperature and humidity of the humidor, like after shipping, yeah. typically Maduras are good to smoke. 
Also, when you get a cigar, a lot of them will tell you that the high end ones will tell you how long they've been aged already. Well, if it's yeah, been aged actually, six that's years, thing I was just then you really, about. it's ready to go. You know, like the Padron Family Reserves, those are all aged in 10 years. Well, here's the thing, here's, but there's a little distinction you got to understand, though. The tobacco is aged, but whenever they, uh, whenever it's time to roll the cigars, they rehumidify it. Yeah. And um, that rehumidification causes ammonia to form again. So after the cigars are rolled, uh, if they're not smoked right away, fresh, they have to sit for, uh, I think, a couple, a couple weeks or a couple months before they're able to smoke. So um, you got to be careful. The tobacco can be aged, but also to the cigar can be aged. There's two. There's yeah, two, those, two, he's two, right. Those are two separate things there. Yeah. All right, well, so, so it's kind of variable. It just depends on a case-by-case cigar. But typically, you're higher in cigar, especially the lighter ones. Uh, give them three to six months. Oh, one in particular, which we're about to carry, uh, Obisex Lost City. A lot of people say this is their, their least favorite Obisex. They say, oh, nothing special about it. But the key to that cigar is you got to age it. Six months, a year, you'll notice a world difference. Honestly, one suggestion, I, I know I gave this already in a past show, but let's say buy five cigars, buy ten, buy a box, and smoke them incrementally over time and watch how it changes. Which is, that, that, that's exactly what I was just about to say. So, look, if you, you you buy a cigar, why don't you smoke one right off the bat to see how it tastes, and then age one, six to a year, and then yeah. taste it again and be like, oh my it, god, look at it, it all depends on the size. So, for instance, there's another uh, vendor here in Lafayette, Murphy's Law. Y'all know Paul. And uh, when I come back from Cuba, I brought about a thousand of these teeny weeny little Romeo and Julietas in the tubes. What's, I think your wife loves us. What size? Is it? Like a one or something? They're tiny. They're like a cigarette on steroids a little bit. You call them chick sticks. Chick sticks. sticks. That's exactly what I called them. And I didn't like them because I was like, eh, but I bought them because, you know, you go to parties and you have 100 people there and everybody wants to smoke and you don't want to waste something that you might put down, right? So I give them to Paul. We start cracking these tubes and they look like glazed donuts from the plume. And I was like, Paul, oh, I want these back. He's like, no, Muto, you're not getting them back. I'm like, dude, look at these. And they were just, and they look like little glazed donuts. And that's because. Yeah. And I can assure you, they're fucking awesome. <laughs> they really no, are fucking awesome. Having the ones that you brought there with the box, it was like a limited edition, like you just got them. When we, when we did the show there. I have plenty of that kind of stuff. But anyway, getting back to what I was talking about with these little bitty cigars, that was because they're so teeny weeny and a typical cigar smoker. And as you know, the trend is going for bigger size cigars and these were the little babies. They were just sitting there neglected. So I looked at the bottom of the box and I was like, geez, this is a 2017 box. And I bought them in 19. So they've been sitting in that store for two years. Nobody wanted anything to do with them. And they were cheap. I, I bought 50 of them. I think cost me 200 bucks. So I bought boxes and boxes and boxes. Because we, I was going to the Miami Boat Show and I was like, fucking, just give everybody a cigar, you know, nobody, whatever. Yeah. They excreted so much oil because plume is actually a form of mold. It's the sugars that are excreted and they get a little bit of mold. That's what I get, but it's not a bad mold. It's not like the green penicillin mold that you can have. Anyways, these things are sweet as the day is long. And I wish I'd have bought everyone they had in Cuba because what a great gift to give to someone yeah, and, and what an exceptional cigar. To get a cigar like this, to plume over like that, would probably take every bit of 10 years. Like, hypothetically, if you had, like, a federal terrorism charge and you wanted to... So the one you defended me on? One, and you wanted to give the paralegal a nice thank you for <laughs> keeping me out of prison, a box of those two bows would theoretically, hypothetically, be an amazing gesture. Anyway, John, and you had touched earlier about uh, some of the counterfeit stuff that's out there. So I brought a couple of samples. Of thank you, to yes. That's what I wanted to say. Oh, thank you, Spencer. We love thank Spencer. You, Spencer. It's very educational. Uh, I, I want some show and tell. So let's let's show some stuff. I don't know how you want me to position with your cameras, but oh, we're we're that, on camera. Let's see. One. So, you know, I find the counterfeiters they love to target the high end stuff, right? So if you take, for instance, it this cigar, a oh, it had a this this looks, you know, and you obviously you can tell. Nice move, right? Smooth move, there, Lex. What, John, do you have a camera where you can put this in front of the camera? Uh, right there. Hey, Spence, if you want to do us a favor, hit Spence, more do tea. me a favor and no, just put this in front of the camera more so tea. people can look. And you'll see how lazy the counterfeiters are. Hey, but keep coming, keep coming, because keep most coming. people don't know. So this cigar is about $125 on right now. Towards and, what, and what's that one called? That one's this right? is the Cohiba push, Supreme. Yeah, push uh, oh, oh, the Oh, I know that one. But this is from 2014. So every year they're like wine and cheese. Come, the older they get, they command higher prices. And this is fake. And they actually got kind of close. 
Yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. With the Sorry, exception audience. of the addition of the going, top band, as you can see, it's very poorly embossed. Keep mm -hmm. going, keep going. And uh, the hal there, there is no hologram here. Keep it appears going, like it's going, hologram. Going, keep going. When we when we do go our ahead. episode right devoted there. to the authentic versus inauthentic right, stories, we'll go into right. detail. With Show the it to that camera. camera. It'll, It'll be, be awesome. awesome. Very educational. You guys are more just put that in front of the camera real quick so people can and hold it steady if you can. So they can kind of keep them side by side and just look at the bands and the the bands. Right there, right there. While while he's doing that, John, back back up, back up four feet. It's been a little while, but is Three, it? Two, maybe, maybe two, I'm I'm out of my mind here. There's a good chance you that are. are. But John, doesn't this As this cigar remind you a here. lot? Back up, you just do it. You have to put them. You have to put them like this, Spencer. Do them like this so people can really. Put it. Uh, actually, you just just use this camera. It's easier. And do it with this. this shake your head. Step back. Step back to me a little bit. Right there. Boom. Now, now going towards the camera. Just going towards the camera. Uh, <laughs> Sorry guys, we don't have our own crew. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Boom, oh, you're in it. There we really should have done some overlays, but we now, didn't. One so thing I wanted to point out with you, John, is look at this. So this is the Maduro 5 Genoas. Yeah. Okay? It's the only Cohiba Maduro right. ever produced. And if you look at the tobacco, frankly, you can't tell. Right? Yep. That's how the counterfeiters, they're really good. Remember, these people are a lot of them, I'm not going to say where they are, but a lot of them around the world, they know what it looks like. What they do is they go buy the real thing in Cuba, they bring it to their farms, they reproduce it, and they get China to make these lazy ass bands. So this is really cool. The only problem I can tell with this instantly is that Cuba doesn't make a Cohiba with a round cap. All their caps have more of this. So Look at that. Thank you so much, Spencer. I'm, I'm gonna have that that was a uh, flatter. <laughs> I could have gone there, man. All right, anyways, we just wanted to point that out to you guys. And, and if you want to know more about any topics, let us know. So <laughs> you had asked me, uh, I think it was in our last conversation. Put your spits. Hey, you can smoke the, the fake one. <laughs> Actually, uh, you'll know when you smoke the real one, very leathery on the Cohiba uh, Supreme Ones. What I was trying to get you to acknowledge, John, is this this type of a, a cigar, which really most Cohibas are the same blend, see low this when you do the Dosa, the curious extra. It's the same blend, just different sizes, different shapes. Well, they're close to the same blend. They're not the exact same blend. They're real close, though. Very hard to differentiate unless you smoke them constantly. But the one New World stick that I think comes the closest to recreating this type of flavor note is the Andalusia Bowl. I just, I literally just started talking to my cousin about that cigar. And I told him, I was like, look, because he kept asking me questions. I was like, look, you just need, I need to streamline you to Alex so that you can just answer. He's his still, question. the stash is intimidating. You probably it is. It is. Rather just do it with you. It is. You. It, but he's got like the whole like gray Santa Claus beard, okay. same age, but he's just, you know, he, he just wants it. He, I guess he likes the middleman. I don't know. I don't know. So tell us what else. He's you smoking doing? that thing for the grass. It's because you saw all the cigars in that box. You think you can get another one or something? Uh, uh hello. Hey, man, maybe I did too much yapping. I'm oh. behind y'all. Oh, so, yeah. it's I used so, to smoke it's like so you guys good. do in Cuba, and I was excoriated by them. They were like, Yuma, it's on average every 45 seconds. So, Are you saying Yuma? Yuma, like the city Yuma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, like I was Yuma, just about to say Like Yuma, Yuma Aberdeen. Yeah. <laughs> no, not that one. But what does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> it means like gringo. In, in like, okay, so it's like, okay. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, anyways, it's kind of a derogatory thing. You know, it's just a reference to, I'd be like, excuse me, it's coon ass to you. But anyways. Like, uh, what were you asking me just a moment ago? <laughs> I was like, what else did you bring to show and tell? Oh, I bought some pretty cool things. I, I didn't know exactly how you wanted hey, to thanks, do this man. show, and I figured we would just bring some props and then kind of talk about absolutely. them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, these are some of some of the collection's finer jars. Uh, Cuba's been putting, well, cigars have been put in jars for probably over 100 years. I don't know. I'd have to go back and date it. But this is the, uh, the holy grail of cigar jars here. See, most people in the West, we don't we don't realize that because New World sticks, they all come in boxes. And so everybody thinks boxes, but but the jar is the, the original way they were done. Yeah, no, like, they're and like Cuba, they're, they're, they're collectibles, you yeah. know. Oh, big <coughs> so this Partagas jar, which is on the cover, can you get that little, Spencer, can you grab that little book into there? It's on the third edition of, of Perlman's uh, Pocket Cyclopedia on Cuban cigars. And I had just happened to see this book online before I went to this trip to Cuba. And I'm in uh, this guy, Frank's condo, me and my brother and some other people we just saw hanging out. And I'm in the kitchen. I'm like, man, I'm going to go be very careful with it. 
and I look on the counter, y'all, and guess what? He's got his kitchen utensils, the spatula and spoons in that jar. So I'm like, Carlitos, come here. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. I said, go tell Frank I'll give him $200 for this jar. He comes back and he says, man, Frank said you could have it. In fact, he bought it at a, uh, an antique store about two blocks up the road. He said he thinks there's another one in there. Oh, yeah, that, that is the Holy Grail. That's what I'm saying. Like, this is this is amazing history. Yeah. So that's pre-revolution. That's pre-Castro. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Now, they, this is they reproduced the jar, which is this one. So I go into the antique store, me and Carlitos and my brother Tim. It's three-story old uh, uh, villa. It's a, what we call a mansion. And it's loaded with antiques. It took me about four hours, all three of us perusing that place. And I finally find this in the back of like a bookshelf, just covered in dust. I was like, boys, here it is. So coincidentally, it cost me 200 bucks for this jar. And I went with Carlitos because to take anything out of Cuba like this, you have to go to their antiquities department. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, you do. So I went and met with uh, six different people. <coughs> and all I got was nada, 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 <coughs> not happening. And Carlitos looks at me and says, Andreas, what are you going to do? I said, have you not looked at my humidors? <laughs> I've been breaking shit out of this country. I, I got to shove it way. up my brother's ass. It's coming out of this country. <laughs> so here they are. And uh, so that this was pre-revolution. And this you is the, a reproduction. <laughs> I said, you have sanitizer. Yeah, right. So check out. You, you can look. Yeah, yeah. Actually, mark on the, the bottom. That, uh, yeah, I did. This was fractured. So who? Just so can I see the one that, that's this, a, that's a reference, that's the, the second one, right? That's right, the, one that's the been, second one. So this is the one that's been. Yeah. That one's like pristine. That one's got some chips in it. Well, it's not only that, there is subtleties in it where you can see. The so you want to tell the story how you got that one through customs? <sighs> it's not. <laughs> it does smell a little <laughs> shitty. <laughs> <laughs> it took you forever to walk right after that. So these, this is like, like I said, kind of what they call it holy grail type stuff. And I looked at these, had them examined, and uh, they actually used a different typeset on these when they printed them. You know? So these are also like, oh my God, anyone that has these, I respect you big time. These are the millennium edition jars. And if you would like to pull them out, we can. But uh, I would see. be happy to okay. because he, just these be super are always hey, so cool to look I'm, at. I'm sorry. I, I, I do need to cut off every once in a while when we have people uh, chime in. I'm sorry, Chris. I'm go I'm, I'm going to get to your question right here. Okay. So it says, so if there's so many fakes, how can we find a reliable place to buy from? You can. Cuba. <laughs> well, you can't right now. And the reason for that is on September 23rd or 24th of 2020, the Trump administration reversed the Obama policies. Uh, so there is no importation of Cuban cigars. Additionally, uh, once COVID hit in March of 2020, all of the factories were completely shut down. On the 25th of this month, I don't even know what today's date is. Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow they will be, six months ago, they came back at 50% capacity. Tomorrow they'll be back at 100% capacity. But good luck even finding those because everything, all of the LCDH stores, which is the franchises from the Obama's Corporation for okay. the world. Uh, we need to back up. So one of the first things you taught me was about LCDH stores. I'd never heard of that. I didn't know what it was. I I tried to buy Cuban cigars. When I was a young man and I went to France, I was like, hey, y'all don't have the embargo. I'm going to try to buy Cuban cigars. So I bought some Cuban. I didn't know what I was doing. It could have been a fake. I don't have any idea. Okay? So, so the first time he mentioned been this, it could have been that. It didn't, it didn't have sand in it. It didn't have a glass top, but it could have been. But one of the things he taught me was about LCDH stores. That's really where it starts. If you want to get into Cuban cigars, you have to understand LCDH stores because it's not a market system like America where you have the producers and they just distribute to wholesalers and the wholesalers distribute to the retailers and the retailers distribute to the public. It's not like that at all. Nope. So tell us, what is an LCDH store and how does it work? Well, the, an LCDH store is the La Casa del Habano store. So like this oh. humidor here was <laughs> issued, I don't know if you guys can read that or not, no, from La Casa del Habano. And uh, there was only 20 of these made. The artists made this one for me. So, uh, in fact, the number on this, they only made 20 of these. I'm number zero, zero out of 20. Because he's a real zero. Or a 20. You got to get the hero if you're... Anyways, the, uh, if you've ever, the first La Costa del Habana store opened in Cancun. So when you, people go to Mexico, I just cringe. And they're like, oh, I went to Mexico and I came back. And they show this 
stuff you, you showed earlier with the glass top and the horrible cigars yes, and the yeah. fake green. Everything's just counterfeited. It's awful because if they're in Cancun, take the time. Go into the LCDA store and you're going to be so amazed at just how beautiful and just, oh, just it's, it's really treated with such respect. That's why I love, love having people like you around to where you can like be actually educated. Instead of being like misinformed and having that misinformation, disinformation, like oh no, this is the real thing, blah blah blah, blah. and then when you're, you talk to someone who's actually been there, done that, you understand the the, the minutia, the details that they put into these things to make sure you're getting a product that they're like, that's me. Absolutely, yeah. and having that firsthand knowledge yeah. is what it's really all about. Because by the time you know, especially in this country, it's not firsthand. It is the whole, you know, the whole body's been thrown at you. It's all bullshit. And uh, in fact, there was a guy on Facebook yesterday. He saw one of my posts where I was describing a particular cigar that I was smoking. And he sends his link to his counterfeit site. And I played along with him. I'm like, oh, you know, and, you know where do you get all these? Oh, I get them from the distributors and the growers and all this bullshit. And I'm like, you have no idea who you're talking to, do you? You should probably go to my page and see because, and I'm not trying to put me on a pedestal, but it really pissed me off because all he's doing is he's taking the unsuspecting buyer who's completely innocent in this, who really is putting me well, back to where ignorant. this all started. I um, said ignorant because they're an unknowing. Right. Own it, well, ignorant is to be aware of something, but ignore it. They're not, yeah, they're exactly. uneducated. It's, it's a different thing. But anyways, um, it, it, it infuriates me that these people get away with it and these and, and Americans, because they don't know, there's, I'm not going to mention particular websites, but there's one called I have. Anyway, that yeah. everyone thinks they have. I haven't a clue which one he's talking about. <laughs> everyone thinks that they're authentic, okay? And I've had people, I'm like, look, I will trade you the real cigar. Just send me yours. I'll pay shipping. Send it to me, right? And I compare them. And it's a lie. We and I'm sorry if I make right? any of you guys mad, but I'm telling you, it's a farce. It's complete bullshit. So if these websites, for instance, there's one called finestcubancigars.com. In fact, the website's now up for sale because they have no inventory, right? That ought to tell you right there, they're authentic. They have, they, they can't get it. So they're not making any money. So the site's up for sale. I don't know if they're going to sell it or not. I oh, speaking of which, we we'll wanted to talk to you about that. Sale up for site, but the site up for sale after the other. The other thing okay. is that these sites that seem to have a never ending supply, well, where, where do you think that's coming from? That takes me to what I want to talk about next, and that is the cigar that everybody who wants to flex Cuban talks about, which is the Monte Cristo number two. I was gonna say the Bahique. Oh, shit. I was gonna yeah, say, well, the Bahique is very highly counterfeited. At one time, the printer for the Bihike band was locked in a vault in Germany. And then the Chinese bosses lost. <laughs> the Chinese were able to replicate the bands. So anything that we can create, they can create, right? It's the tobacco. So uh, a lot of people just look at the bands and they're like, oh, if it's the band's good, it's not. But there's some hidden codes, and I'm not going to tell everybody the stuff I know about all the codes in the bands. That's for you to go find out for yourself because that's my friend's secrets and I don't want to tell them, but there's very special ways to determine authentic versus not. And it's very subtle. I mean, I actually took one day and today before I came here, and I was like, where is it? I can't go in there or not. And then there it was very, very subtly. And it's a micro. But that's what I'm so talking about, the minutia of the details that they put into these things. So do you know it came from a real right. factory? That's so why I don't want you folks to go to that website I mentioned earlier, because all of that is spelled out. What I want to point out about the VE game is that if you are interested in, in trying to purchase Cuban cigars online, there's a lot of retailers that are advertising it. Uh, I've, I've confronted a number of them. I've exposed them as frauds. But if you want to protect yourself, the easiest way to do that is to look for a Bihike. Because the Bihike is, uh, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's a very limited produced cigar. Extremely limited. Only goes to the Casa del Habano and, stores. It only goes to LCDA stores. That's exactly. And there's a backlog for two and a half years. There's a backlog for two and a half years. So if the place that you're thinking of purchasing from is carrying case, what does that mean? It's bullshit. It's bullshit. And if you know it's bullshit with case, and you have to call in the question, everything else that they're selling, and that's what people don't realize. They're always like, no, man, these stores are lit. And I look, and I'm like, dude, you're selling case. I don't even have to know everything about everything else to know that if you're selling vehicles, you're full of shit because you can't get them at LCDH 
And if they're getting made, they're going there first. Yeah. When so, I got my BE case, I had to wait three months from the time I had talked, had the conversation yeah. with those people. They were like, you need to, it's going to take three months. Because remember, it, the tobacco only comes from Pinar del Rio, which is a kind of a relatively small region in Cuba, right? That's the only tobacco. Yeah, so and it's the only the two top leaves. Yeah. So the, the, the market, the availability of this is so minute. If you have the real thing, count your blessings. And don't, you know, and the other thing too is knowing there is no importation into the United States of Cuban products, coffee, um, alcohol, tobacco, and you have it, why in the world would you be selling it cheap? You can't replenish yeah, it. Yeah, you can't. So right. can we can we receive the can? Maybe. You got 175 dollars I just, I just <laughs> want to look. I just want to look. No touch. I just don't want to look. This is the big. Yeah, Maybe sniff. There, there's your bore out there, Spencer. Maybe just a sniff. This is the, uh, this is the biggest one of the patola. They make the 56, the 54, and the 52, and that's simply the ring gauge and the length. Yes. So I've actually met. Uh, we uh, one of the first times we hung out. We smoked the heat case and now you see how this is bled those oils from sitting in there. Oh my god. And that's been sitting under the stack just sitting there. So oh, Jesus. You want to look at that? Oh I got it. Don't you drop it, you bought it. So as much as much as he has, which is like over ten thousand of these Cuban cigars, I've only Thank God my smoked my two heat case. That's how rare they are. You really just don't want to be burned because they're very special. Except your birthday party, my stupid ass gave three of them away. Oh, oh that's that's like such a good Why party. would you do such a Well, because I was being, well, I couldn't help it. Mm. You were drunk. I'll never forget. No, when, I wasn't drunk. I'll never forget when John smoked his first Bahike. It oh. was like, I was all like, he needs to change his pants. So yes. everyone thinks <laughs> the Bahike is, the, everyone makes a big deal out of the Bahike, right? This is a cigar you want to make a big deal out of. This is the, um, as you know, you love the Monte Cristo, right? This is the number two, but this is the Grand Reserve. So this cigar, Retails probably in the three hundred dollar, three hundred fifty dollar range per cigar. For the real ones. Yeah. Oh my god. Is that a rabbit over there? <laughs> you smoked one of those. Who's that guy right there in that truck? <laughs> oh my goodness. You okay. guys cannot cannot see how giddy I am to be able to like play with this stuff. This is just dream come true right here. Hmm. And be smoking a uh, three minutes extra while you're doing it. Right. Phenomenal. Well, we got other years of other our, stuff in here we can smoke afterwards too. Dude, our audience this is also has this is the uh, robusto. Blue. This is the Bihike 52. So you can see that, and there's a size in the middle. Mm. See the detail that goes into these things. Like, people don't understand. Like that's so. You know, what I'll say to tease people: Monte Cristo is one of the most commonly sought after a cigar. The number two, especially. Everybody who wants Cuban cigars, they want a Monte Cristo number two. But what people don't realize is that the Monte Cristo band has an any counterfeit measure yep. that is available under a black light. I won't tell you what it is. Right. You're and just the band, out. this is a different band for the Grand Reserva. So this is the Monte Cristo Grand Pyramid. This is the one I mentioned earlier that uh, hit um, 258 bucks a piece. Yeah, that's what we were smoking for your first Oh, time. dude. So you can tell, I mean, the size is much bigger. And then look at the haze. You talked about that little glaze. It's oh, like, you know, man. And yeah. I wish I'd have never, uh, ever smoked one of these because when I do smoke them, it's like, oh man, do a, you know, French, oh my God, it's like really getting better. But oh, this, thing, this, this thing here, right, which is not a Grand Reserve, commands the same price as the Grand Reserve does. Tell us about the difference between the Reserves and the Grand Reserve. Well, a Reserva is two years. So the tobacco aged at least two years at the time of rolling. Grand Reserve, yeah, but five years. Roll. Huh? So you're, you're saying before they even roll, right? Before it's even rolled, and a lot of times it's even older than that. They just they have these forms out in Cuba, man, just just sitting there forever, you know, just sitting there forever. But these blends, the uh, the 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 blenders in Cuba, these people are masters. For instance, when they make like <laughs> this cigar was made for Lebanon, right here. This is called the Senadores. This was released in 2019. Okay, when they blend this cigar, there's a delegation that will come from Lebanon to Cuba and spend time with those blenders. And they'll, they'll spend, spend maybe six months smoking cigars and blending and blending and blending. It's like making this beautiful wine or whiskey or something of that nature, right? Well, when the, I think I told you this already. When this cigar came out, it was uh, introduced in France. So Kai d'Orsay is a bridge in France, and that's why I made a little cigar for them. 
But anyway, when it came out, it didn't have the new band, right? It came out when it was released with this band. So I did kind of a trick question on Facebook. I was like, which one of these is real? Yeah. Of course, every expert has to chime in. And very few people got it right. They're both real. This is the first one, and this is the subsequent band that came out. And talk about a blind cigar. I love a kite door. Oh, my They are magnificent. But I want to talk about this one. We are in the business end. Like, this is... We, we, yeah, are, we, we are, are about the end of your second, third. That's where a Cohiba is start smoking. It starts smoking, smoking it. It starts smoking the blood. So, like, what are you picking up, John? Everything, leather, the the, the richest of the, the 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 back part of the the, the taste. You know what I mean? Like everything, I, and I'm picking up everything. Oh my god! To me, the epitome of this cigar is mm. almost dead center. You know, I found so, out so leather because I noticed on all these cigars, like. When you get the addition of Matadas and the Exclusivos, they all have two bands. Some of them have two bands, right? And they're all positioned differently on the, the cigar. So I was talking to my friend C, and I'm like, you know, what is this all about? He says, that is because they can tell you exactly where you need to quit smoking that cigar, which is at that band. Of course, we as Americans. We, we don't listen to nobody. No, no everybody that not. I talk to, they're like, screw that. They save the band and smoke it up. That's what right. this dude's going to do right here. Well, hold on. Let, let me back up just a little bit because I want to get to so many things before you even finish the cigar. You know where your money has been spent when you smoke a cigar like this. Yeah. Yeah, this cigar right even, here runs about seventy-five dollars, but it's two hours. It's like having a nice dinner or buying a relatively it's okay exactly bottle of wine. So you know where you spent your money. It's like going to a, a, a really prestigious steakhouse and having them do the steak right. Mm-hmm. You know. And then when you have somebody like Luton come around and they're like, no, I aged it perfectly. This is where you should be at it. And then you taste this amongst all the other things we've ever smoked. And you're like, are you serious? Dude, it, it breaks my heart it. to watch stop people it. online talk smack about Cohiba specifically yeah. because it's like they don't know. They're not smoking one that's been yeah, aged for four years, years because those like, I'm telling you, dude, I am what a snobby one? cigar smoker. Like, no, this other like the um, I find most of that or, or most of that type of those types of comments are people who order their stuff online and they'll complain about draw issues and all these issues, right? Well, in Cuba, every cigar is hooked up to a, a draw machine, so they'll put a suction here and there's a meter, and that thing has to pull, and they, they all have different settings, right? Some cigars they, they don't want you to pull hard, it's got to be a nice slow draw, but you'll never have anything where your eyes cross from the on. But anyway, every cigar, there's one person that sits there. It's really fascinating. Go on YouTube and view some of the videos of the factories and the different facets of the organization and, and how everything is done. It's it's really remarkable, although antiquated, but still remarkable. And everything in, in Cuba, especially this caliber, is all uh, a hecho de mano, made by hand. And out of all, even though the market and the economy is really bad in Cuba, the, 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 most, the most looked down upon job in all of Cuba is the technician who monitors the draw machine <laughs> okay here we go let's job get sucks <laughs> here we go. i, I so knew something was coming this right guy there. Uh, you got to you know like you got to see the timing and how you got that <laughs> sets up perfectly like, actually we, uh, i said i said it like a bear trap and johnson like i'm doing it anyway <laughs> <laughs> i'm stepping in that shit <laughs> one thing that i'm glad y'all brought up that brings me this to mind is that when i went to cuba and i um, my first day there and i was going through the tour of the factory uh Arielis, who's my friend, she says, you know, to be a roller here, you have to go through nine months of education, and you get one time at that. You get one day to roll, and you either pass or fail. If you fail, you can never be a roller. So the standard Talk is about way higher. Panic attack on them, right? The when I, when I, when I taught, no, not, not, not if it's religion. When I taught not math it's, at college, dude, dude, I had so many people just turn in blank exam, and they're like, I can't do this. Can you imagine if it was like you get one cigar? Like, I mean, it would be all like, I ain't even rapping about that. That's way too much. But, hold on. If, if, if it's if it's your your essence of what you are as a being, that that's what you want to do because that's your creation. That's And people are going to be like, look, you know why people go to this standard? You know, well, the average you would person. Be, you would achieve. You would want to achieve. That, so you would put the extra effort to push yourself out there. The average person in Cuba, uh, you know, they're communists. So they get about $20 a month plus rice and beans. When you're a roller, you get five cigars a day. 
So can you imagine if you got five of these a day? I wouldn't want to be on board. That, that's that's what you make here if you think about the retail, full retail, long retail price of it. So you know you can work for say 20 days. I think they work five days a week. It's Monday, I guess maybe six days a week. But anyway, you know you're gonna work 20, 24 days a month, and you times five. That's four or five boxes of cigars a month they give you on top of your whopping twenty dollars. So before I ask my next question, I want to I want to say a word about the cocktail, the, the drink pairing. We're drinking rum with the cigars because that's the customary, you know, in America, hey, hey, hey. we all think about whiskeys and scotches, which work great for New World sticks because a lot of cigars have earth notes, which pair very well with peat and scotch. And then a lot of the cigars that might have a subtle sweetness to them, the sweetness of the bourbon pairs well. But with Cuban cigars, because they're lighter and sweeter, rum is a perfect pairing for that, which I'm, I'm enjoying the shit out of my Cuban rum. Yeah, I have. It is. Yeah. It is fantastic. So big thanks for that. But now back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> uh, what is what is the, the 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 Habano that gets you the most excited? Like if we're like, hey, we're gonna hang out and smoke. What's the one where you're all like, ah, I'm I'm, I'm super stoked we're gonna smoke that. You know, here we go. Well, this is the thing for me because I, I'm different than everybody else because I'm I've had this all the time. I know, but my our audience has no problem. right. So I what, look at what, it and I'm like, I'm kind of like. I mean, what? What haven't I smoked a hundred times? I mean, probably would be. I was like a fabuloso. Oh my God, what a great stick. I like the, the Romeo and Juliet at the last Havana's festival uh, that I attended came out with the Oro series. A what? Oh, what? what? Oh, o R O, Oro. It means oh, okay, gold. Okay, okay. And uh, the presentation was just, I brought some of them actually if you want to see it. And that cigar, it's not a big cigar. They're kind of really small. There's the Halda Alcos, the uh, Diana's, the, 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 the little bitty torpedo one. But the, the, the blend is just amazing. And I'll, I have a lot of those cigars. And the world can't even get them. So people are like, well, how did you get them? I'm like, I can't tell you that. <laughs> you know, that's, that's also the sucks. entry behind yeah, it. So I, do I smoke those cigars right now? Once in a while, I'll smoke them. Yes, because but I'm like you know, and they're fantastic. Oh yeah, they are. Thanks for rubbing it in our face. Oh, you know? they're so good. So I've got these things like I, I have I have the 500th anniversary San Cristobal. Okay, a humidor at the Habanos Festival with just a hundred of those sticks in it went to auction at two hundred thousand dollars for a hundred. That's twenty five hundred. That's two uh, two thousand dollars a stick. Can you imagine that for a cigar? Okay. Let, let's let's real that's no that, that, that's that's crazy but our audience can't do that no i'm just saying so when you ask me like what do i want to smoke like i'm tempted to smoke one of those but then my business side says you Are don't smoke that you just no, leave exactly. that in there for 20 more years exactly. you know? what, yeah, what i can not say know. is that we hang out and, and, and smoke all the time and it's funny he's still after all these years smoking when he texts me what he's picking out he's he's giddy He's always excited about what we're going to smoke. And it's like, that tells you just how amazing. And Billy, I'm, I'm always excited too. <laughs> I, I, I love it because it's one of those things, like I said, even though I've been at it a fairly decent amount of time, I'm like a, a first grader when I, when I look at this and I'm like, oh my God, there's so much more. You know, I didn't know for the longest time that Cuba uh, imported tobacco for their cigarettes, their, hand, their machine rolled cigarettes. I had no idea. Where is that, Virginia? I don't know. <laughs> and I could care less. But I was like, why would they import tobacco? Then I read my buddy, and I asked him, and he's like, well, if we sell cigarettes too, but you'll never see cigarettes in the LCD store. Yeah. Yeah. So it's That's really, cool. yeah. And I don't buy, I don't smoke cigarettes. So, but you'll see them in the stores in Cuba and they ship them all over the world. Uh, Mexico buys a lot. So of those little uh, Cohiba shorts that come in the box. Don't even ask me about that. That's, don't even ask me about that. I wouldn't even smoke that. Okay, so, Actually, you know. can we change gears here? Let's start talking about some things that are happening. Because I got moved tonight. I got it. Oh my God. Food. Come oh on. Oh my man. God. What are you doing? I know. I know we got him here, but look, we also want people to see how fun that Mouton is. Because <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> you know, I'm just on coffee. Right? As long as I'm smoking this, I don't know what we're talking about. We can be like, look. So uh, that Netflix cutie show was pretty. <laughs> no, let's talk about it. Let's talk about some Netflix stuff. Oh my God! The, the, we lost our one viewer. No, no, no! Get out of here. Dude, look. How about the Dave Chappelle special? I uh, okay. I watched it. Loved it. 
I love and I don't, I don't agree with his politics, but I loved it. You know, he makes he makes a lot of jokes barbed and aimed at white people. And you know what? As a representative of congregation, honky, I didn't have a problem with it. I, because why can't he, people just laugh? he throws it out in all directions. So it's like, hey, you want to be treated equal? Now you are, motherfucker. You're getting jabbed like everybody else at the table. Yeah. So I don't understand, like, why, why, especially as a mouton. <laughs> What is Come your on. Inference there? Because of, of I have been a you fan know why you know why the pal. downtown the downtown area what they did to General Mouton who donated the land. Well, actually, he didn't. It was his father. Well, his father, his father, father, yeah, his grandfather is the one. But I'm just saying, it. like, so and, and we're able to laugh at it. Why is there such a minute, detailed? So is your wife is special. I'm, I'm going to tell you why, John, and, and and whether you folks agree with me or not, that's fine. No harm, no foul. I've traveled all over the world. And it seems to me that in this country, especially right now, we're being divided. And we're being divided for a reason. Because, yeah. so because we're being conquered. Absolutely. We're being conquered by a certain element in this country that folks better freaking wake up. You're going to end up being their bitch. Okay? Yeah. That's what's going on. I have so many black friends who, when I walk up to them, they're like, what's up, my nigga? Okay, they tell me that. And I'll say the same thing to them. And we hug one another and we sit down, we drink, we smoke, we curse, we laugh, we joke, and all that other stuff, right? But I would never go up to a complete stranger of color and use the N word with them. Even if I was angry well, with them. Well, technically, that's a term of dear word you just said. And then there's the right. hard R. So, and what gets me, though, this is the hypocrisy in it all, is that you watch plenty of videos with black on black and they, they want to insult one another using the N word. Okay, to me, what is all this? What are we really looking at? And I think what we need to do is step back for a minute and say, you know what? This is total bullshit. What we need to do is I don't care what color your skin is. I really don't give a rat's ass. Your blood's red. And if your heart's good, you're my friend. That's the way I look at it. Rat's ass is pink, but oh, you would know. <laughs> <laughs> it's all pink on the ends. Anyway, oh, can't believe I didn't. <laughs> see what you do? Um, but but, no, so, that's, but that's the thing, like, John. I mean, look. Dave Chappelle is a funny dude. Go look at his stuff when he had the Chappelle we show. And he left. We okay. love him. I don't care. He walked away from fifty million dollars. There was reason. a reason for that. And he walked away from the reason. same fucking people who are doing what's going on in the world today. These are the same people. Some of you might, might get the connection here. The same people. Now he's back. You know why? Because he went and he came back. He's like, I need money. Yep. Okay. So now he's got fifty. Well, I don't think that's why he came back. I because he was doing shows in the park. <laughs> He didn't care who was he's listening. brilliant. I don't care if he doesn't like. I, I don't think, think he doesn't like white agenda, people. I think that there's agenda. certain elements of every race, every race, that don't like other people. I would say I don't like anybody. Falls more <laughs> right. a, 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 a race realist in that he he's like I'm gonna I'm gonna make fun of everybody because everybody has something to be mocked about. I mean, look, we're what what is the art of doing an impression? It is generalizing someone's traits into a few key things and then exaggerating them. So whether you're doing an Arnold impression or a Mike Tyson impression or a Christopher Walken impression, that's what you do. And he uses that to make his humor. So he does that with white people. He does it with black people. He does it with, he's doing it with gay people. He did it with trans Trans. people. And you can mock people. And the thing is, is like I've seen him make fun of every different uh, 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 category of humans, but the one group that he put the most effort into being sensitive about how he mocked him was the trans community in that last show. Dude, the way he told that story about Daphne at the end, that's it, was, the closing. it was brilliant. I it mean, it was, was emotional, and it was like, wow. And he, he started he, he said said that, no racist. I think his wife. He said that as perfectly yeah, as he like, could have, and for them to still act like he was perpetuating violence against them, I was like, dude, fuck you. He, he, he treated y'all better than he treats everybody else, and that's not good enough. And here is our and trans here, friend. And here's, and here's Spencer. And here's our new yeah. trans friend. <laughs> That's right. Um, uh, I wanted to make a comment too on this conversation. So uh, in one of my in one of my classes I took back in college, I uh, took a class on Aristophanes, and Aristophanes was a Greek poet and, com- and comic. And one thing you learn about comedy is comedy is a way of making a thing. Typically, whenever you tell people the truth in a serious way. They take offense to it. Yep. So the way you get people to think without pissing them off, make them laugh. Is you make them laugh, and part of that, part of comedy, is 
one of the easiest targets to go against the comedy to make a commentary about are the people who take themselves too seriously. So if people take themselves too seriously and get offended at everything, that's just that's a ripe target for comedy. So uh, for example, and I want to I'm gonna give a bone to the other side. Donald Trump couldn't take a joke from the SNL. Oh, and I'll give you and that. and uh, true story, true story. And and the thing is, is like. SNL kept going after him because he would get all pissed about it. They didn't even shut. They didn't even shut down. They're, fit, they're they're not funny. I'll be honest. I think Alec Baldwin's impression of uh. Oh, him, I'm glad you said of, of that. Him, of him, Thank you, buddy. Him, oh my him, god. Of him is really funny, but also too on the other side, uh, a lot of liberal leaning people as well get all upset too. So like the people on the right get all upset about you know all people making fun of the flag and all that. Which don't get me wrong. We should respect the flag. But there, I think there's room for comedy in that. But also, too, on the other side, people on the other side like to uh, get all offended over every single little thing. Learn to take a joke. Let those jokes foster conversation. Well, then, you know I, what I, I think I, jokes are, and I think Alex touched on this perfectly, is that jokes are meant to make you think mm-hmm. and also find the humor in everything that we do. And okay. Alex is kind of an expert. that You were a professional comedian for yes, a while, right? Cool. And yeah. he made, like, what, 12 bucks a month? Yeah, on a good Less month. On a good month. month. And let me tell you something. If I made so, tips, Sarah McLaughlin would have sang me a song. <laughs> look, look, if you have a, a humorous way approach to life, you're not going to be miserable. That's and you exactly. can and actually enjoy it. Learn, learn to enjoy your life. Exactly right. Laugh at Just yourself, listen to too. The, yeah, Laugh listen to the life is but a dream. So listen, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you brought up Alec Baldwin. Because mm-hmm. there is somebody who is making fun of a narcissist, but is one in the same. Are you He's talking about the same who's... Alec Baldwin that just murdered someone on his film exactly. set? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And let, let me take my glasses off to this because this man has not only mm-hmm. touched on people that uh, it, it, listen. You're in the spotlight. You put yourself there. No one else put you there. Okay. So if someone puts you there. That's a different story. He put himself there. So when you ask a uh, paparazzi not to film you, and they're like, "Oh, no problem, Mr. Baldwin. We respect it. You want to have your personal time. Just that's a difference." But then when you come at them and threaten their lives, and then you go and take a life, I'm sorry, Mr. Baldwin, you deserve everything that's going to be handed to you. I researched this man. I know what he's about. He is a piece of crap from the word crap. Okay, now y'all know how we feel. Let's get back to Nirvana. Right, right. <laughs> I just thought it was amazing. He had that tweet. He was like, oh, I wonder what it's like to take the life of somebody. And then he does it. And then he like, does it. Oh, and hey, no. wouldn't that be funny if he acted his way out of... The, the bent over. Ooh. And he's going to get away with it. Just so you and know. That's what's so that's, scary. He's great in Beatles, just 30 rounds. It's, it's the say. Talmudic way of doing things. Oh no, I, 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 oh my God. I can't watch anything. That's else. Okay. I, but you know what? Hey, hey, listen. Listen. Go. To each his own. If you're a supporter of Alec Baldwin, good on you. You know what I mean? Maybe in his personal life, he's not what he portrays on TV. And then you see the TV part and you're like, oh, well, I respect what he's done his, his thing. We all respect the R. Kelly's music, but we can't respect the fact that he people I, I didn't respect kids. his music. Thank you. I'm just saying there, there are people out there who respect his music. They're not the same person. Like, I'm not saying it's true because it's never been proven the same thing with Michael Jackson. Everyone loves his music. We all loved him as an uh, entertainer. Did you not hear R. Kelly when he was uh, admitted into prison? He was all like, how many golden showers? Three showers did we get today? <laughs> <laughs> Again, the comedian. <laughs> But no, I mean, like going back to my my point is is that we have to distinct the the, the point of someone's an entertainer from their personal life and what they do, and and Alec Baldwin is such that he's the same thing as what you were saying, Spence is he's a narcissist just like he's making fun of Donald Trump as being a narcissist. So I mean, like learn how to take like yeah. like the main point of what we were trying to say is learn how to take a joke and understand when. There's jokes being out there. If you, you know what I mean? so, also, if you can't take a joke, the person making the joke has more power over you. That, that is also yes, true. You're living but if we, here. To use the language of the woke left, if someone says something that you find offensive, maybe they're just autistic. They'll be able to defend it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he has issues, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but I do, want, I do want to get back uh, to, to Mouton and, and some more questions here. So I, I have a question. I'll play devil's advocate for the general ignorant public. If, if there are people out there who are cigar smokers and they are legitimately interested in wanting to, to try a Cuban cigar to know what all the fuss is about, how would you recommend they go about doing that? 
right now. It would, would be the, it would be the easiest way. Right now? Yeah, right now. Huh, good luck. Thank somebody who has a big, huge humidor. <laughs> well, no, no. I mean, I have friends that I share the collection with, but I'm not in some kind of a retail uh, aspect of this. I love the collection. It's my baby. Um, I would say just be patient. You know, Cuba's starting up tomorrow at 100% capacity, and it's going to probably take a year or two for them to work through all the backlog. And uh, you know what? Get your ass on a fucking plane. Go to Cuba. It's what are you looking at? Four hundred bucks, and then you can hang out. You don't have to go through any of the quarantine anymore. You don't even need to be vaccinated. Now to re-enter the country, maybe another story, but you don't have to be vaccinated. You just have to go and have one of the little bullshit tests that says you know you don't have whatever, and uh, hang out and go to the beach and go to the restaurants and go spend your money. And I want to use the f bomb and screw the American government because what the American government's trying to do is they're saying don't go and spend your money in Cuba because we want to punish the government. Does anyone in their right mind really think the people in power suffer at any given time? Yeah. They're in power. They have they get everything first and foremost. It's the other person who doesn't get diddly squat. A tube of toothpaste in Cuba right now is fifteen dollars. A bar of soap is five dollars. These people get twenty dollars a month. Yeah. Put that in check, Americans. Okay, you guys. You know, I mean, the way I look at it is, this is bullshit that anyone should be treated this way. And if we're not careful in this country, welcome to their nightmare. There's plenty of Cubans. Which, ironically, what he's saying is a liberal position. Most liberals will say that the embargo is anti-humanitarian and needs to be lifted. Also, so, you also know, too, I want to comment as well that you could take this and expand this to other, other uh, not just the Cuban cigar world, but the whole cigar world. Uh, I was watching the PCA's first policy summit or whatever, where they had some politicians come talk about cigars. And I learned something. Cigars provide, I think, over 300,000 jobs in these Caribbean and Central American countries. So if you clamp down on cigars, you're you're hurting poor people in poor countries. Well, I think so the problem you have, I, 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 I don't think the problem you don't have is like Cuba. It's yeah. Cuba is not diversified enough, okay? Think about it. Here's the largest island in the Caribbean, right? 100 miles south of of Key West, Florida, they should be in the seafood industry, it would have seemed to me. They should be in the diving industry. I mean, they should really be exploiting what the island is all about. For those of you that have never been, Cuba was considered the jewel of the Caribbean. I've never been to a place, it's like going back in history, and it's block after block after block. If that real estate was in pristine condition in the United States, five, ten, twenty million dollars a home, block, 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 for miles. Yes, yeah, so Gail just said, Gary just said we are headed there if people don't wake up and fight back. Uh, oh, I know question. Let's stand up. That's I'm true. gonna tell you something. If you don't stand that. for something, you fall for anything. What, what I want to say about what he was saying with the uh, if you're a new smoker, my advice to you, don't even step your foot into the Cuban cigar pool mm -hmm. if you are not prepared to do the work to make sure because like we said earlier in the show, the Cuban cigar market is 10 times bigger than the actual Cuban supply, which means 90% of every transaction is counterfeit. If you don't want to take the time to arm yourself with facts and information to protect yourself from that 90%, you just might as well not even try because you're just throwing your money away. There's no way to know. You know, we have a good friend of the show who lives in California, and he told me how much he was interested in trying to discover a level. We'll just get you one. Well, he went, he found a third party retailer online. Bought himself a little box, very cheap. He even said they were great. And we were like, tell you what, man, you send us a couple of those and we'll send you one from the collection, like a real one. And so he sent us a couple. We sent him one back. We smoked his. It was not, they weren't real. We they, lit his. No. It, 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 did, it took like, the, the first part was like, yeah, this isn't right. Because it, the taste, the flavor notes, it had notes that Cuban cigars don't have and it did not have the notes that they're supposed to have in in, in when you get to that point where you're able to determine it and discern, it's a obvious. But it's I got to tell you, difference. like I'm at the point where I've been studying under him pretty, pretty hard for the last year. I feel comfortable if I'm going to try to go buy some somewhere to make sure I don't get ripped off. But how many people can say they put that much work and have been exposed to the type of cigars that I've been exposed to and that kind of personal knowledge? It is That's really daunting. Do. I would say don't even try it. It's it's a lot of work. Uh, follow our instructions. We'll keep you safe, but it's really daunting. 
and I argue people. Now all the time. I will say I will say this though. Uh, so a lot of the a lot of the New World cigars sold outside of the United States do does use Cuban tobacco in it though. So um, so Altadish USA. Uh, now of course I could be wrong. I don't know the details, but uh, Altadish USA, which you know. They uh they they sell the the New World Monte Cristos, H I mean, that we all see on every in every humidor. Uh, they have a parent company. I can't. I have a hard time pronouncing Tabernacolo or whatever. Um, they uh they biggest cigar one of the big, biggest cigar company in the world, and they're a major shareholder in the Cuban cigars. That's the Havana's Corporation. Yeah, Havana Corporation. Yes, they also a lot of the cigar a lot of regular production cigars that are not Cuban cigars. Around the world, outside the United States, does contain Cuban leaf, just like um, just like uh, let's say the my father, um, my some of my father's might have Honduran and Nicaraguan tobacco. In them. Well, some of these cigars uh might have a Nicaraguan tobacco with some Cuban leaf in it, and some Dominican. So you could also get it's another region of the world. So you, some of these cigars, which you get from other countries, which are not Cubans, do does have real Cuban tobacco in it. Too. You're correct when you say that. However. Mm-hmm. Tobacco is grown all over the island, and everything is graded, right? So the tobacco that they export is not the top tobacco. And if you're going to smoke or enjoy anything, enjoy the best of the best. Don't be average. Don't be top of the bottom or bottom of the top. Go after the best. That's what that's what it's really all about, and there's nothing like it because you're in a league all by yourself. So, yeah, that is true. They do ship out, did I say ship out? Ship out some stuff, um, but I would never smoke it. I just think it's fair. Well, like, the um, reason I wouldn't because I've smoked a cigar in Cuba that I was like, this is crap. You know, not for my guy, but just someone is smoking. I'm like, this is, but it's Cuba. That, that's it. That, there's a difference. Something yeah. in that, you know, I can tell you that this is French wine. And then you can have, you know, something from the Puyac region, which is the epitome of French wine. And then you can have something from another region. It doesn't make it the best in the world just because it's French now, wine. Something analogous to this could be within the Dominican Republic. You have Dominican tobacco. You can have some Dominican tobacco, you know, for the filler and binder of, let's say, the, um, like, the Arthur Oakley Chateau, which is decent cigar. It's average, but it's decent. But also, too, you could have cigar, you could have Dominican tobacco from the Puente Estate, like, which you have an Ash ESG or the Opus X. And you got, so, you got that really nice Dominican tobacco, but also, too, you just have that average stuff as well. Which, and, yeah, so, and, and then, not, but there's nothing wrong with that. For every region, you're going to have this hierarchy where it's like, they're going to have their best of the best, and if, if you're if you're interested in trying to sample the best of the best when it comes to Cuban, I gotta tell you, you're just gonna have to find direct pipeline from Cuba because all the, you know, oh, I got a guy who gets a guy, and we we we, we run, you know, if the if the price you're paying is at or less than what the LCDH price is, it's bogus. They don't have Costco's for Cuban cigars. You don't get volume discounts. You know, what about at the beach with the glue? Uh, Cohiba Mahique is 150 bucks <laughs> stick, or it's 50 bucks a stick. You know, so that's totally legit, legit. We see. I mean, I'm in a lot of cigar groups. I, I keep my my ears well, that's from to the ground, and, 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 and I listen to what people say. And a lot of people are getting Cuban cigars, and they they don't have a verifiable source. It's it's all very suspect. And Mouton's go do a bunch of stuff. Oh, I see he's got some exclusivo bands out here. Yeah, I'll come I was hoping that. we would talk about those. Well, um, this is this is really what makes it all special. So we talked about the delegations that go to Cuba and they all sit there and they get all these brands and they create this stuff. So <clears throat> that's done all over the world. This is the, the Contiki. Uh, when this cigar came out, I think it was 5,000 boxes that they made. And I think it was only 10 cigars. So 50,000 cigars, right? One of the finest cigars you have been smoking in your life. This one here, is made, it's a El Rey du Mundo as well, for the Los Andes area, <coughs> right? Now, these are people from South America. They know a little something, something about tobacco. And notice they all pick the El Rey du Mundo line, right? Can this I stop you for two seconds? Time's because up. Garrett, uh, Garrett just had a great question. So what do rollers that get five a day do with their stash? Do they sell them to a third party? What do they do? Uh, well, that's a question that I can't answer in general, but I can give you a, a, a personal experience as far as that goes so i was talking to a guy on facebook the other day and i wasn't sure he was trying to trick question because he posed it exactly like that he said is this true do they like and i said absolutely they do that you know and uh but right now no one's going to cuba so what are these rollers doing with all these cigars these these you know and then you have to find that person 
And then you have to, once you get them, see in Cuba, you can only leave the country with 50 cigars without a receipt. Anything in excess of that, Cuban Customs seizes it. Unless you wink, wink, know somebody. But that's how it works, right? So even if you go to the LCDH store and you've got the box and everything, you better have the receipt. And they're very strict with that. So when you go to Cuba, you know some roller there and they've got a month's worth of, you know, four boxes of stuff. You can't bring all that back. You can try it, but you're probably going to have half of it seized, you know. So it's kind of a tricky little situation over there. It's interesting. But anyway, I was pointing out some of this stuff because I've got cigars that are made exclusively for Russia, exclusive for France, exclusive. I mean, just they, they make them. It's so awesome. If they're, for, if they're exclusive for France and Russia, why, why would you do it? Because I have to be careful when I answer this. Because my friend, my dear brother there, he's the top cat of the factory that produces it all. So he gives you like a little taste, like sampler bags. Well, he'll tell me before I come out there, he's like, we're making these for this country. Do you want any of these? I'm like, yeah, of course. <laughs> Whoever says no to any of that, right? I'm like, hell yeah. That was the main thing I wanted. I wanted stuff that you can't just go to Cuba to get. You know, some of this stuff, you've got to go to Russia to get that cigar. Or you've got to go to Lebanon. Or you've got to go to Saudi Arabia. You've got to go to some country. And then when you get there, good luck getting it because those LCBH stores are who get it. And there's a waiting list for everything. So it's very, very rare. I've got, I didn't bring this one, but I wanted to, which is the one from Hong Kong, the Sir David by Punch. Fantastic uh, cigar. Oh my God. Well, Sir David was this Love guy. He was the case. top guy that handled all of Asia's Habanos distribution. Can you imagine being that guy? China is the largest market for Cuban cigars. And they're also the country that's in Cuba doing all the developments, so all the high rise hotels and everything. That's all Chinese companies. Well, they're in like Flint, right? It's a good luck. At once, I mean, 1.3 billion people, whatever their count is over there. How many of those people do you think smoke? You know, well, you, China has one of the highest rates of, uh, well, it, they're the biggest uh, consumer of cigarettes. Like, Asia in general has been like that. So yeah, it's, it's kind of neat. Well, they also have the biggest population. Besides India. Yeah, right. They're about they're high, they're I think they're bigger than India. Yeah. Well, one's, well, I I said they're, one's they're, like they're, a like one hundred million things. difference, disparity between the two. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would just tell people, especially here in the country, if you're not going to go to Cuba, don't buy anything online. Don't buy anything online. And I don't care. If they have it and they're not in the LCDH store, the odds are they're involved because the counterfeiters have these websites. Think about it. If you were going to be in the counterfeit business and you've got a, a shipload full of garbage, put a website together, put all the photos of the real stuff on there and get everyone to believe it, right? They take their money. That's what they do. And it infuriates me that they do that because that's what happened to me to get that from the get go from this, right? I was taken advantage of because I didn't know. I didn't. And these newbies, they don't know. You know, there's no. That's why we're here to yeah. educate, to, right? To and there's know. no one on TV talking about the counterfeit industry. Nobody. In fact, I think the same people involved in the counterfeit industry, the same people that's doing all the crap that's going on in the world I today, because no they get idea. away with it with no ramifications whatsoever. Well, that's. I love stepping in when someone says something like that. Because listen, because if you can control the information, you can control the narrative. It's just like the drug business. We have a drug problem in the, in this country, right? I mean, it's funny, in the 80s, we had uh, marijuana from Colombia, then they paraquatted it. There was no more marijuana. We had met the quaalone, quaaludes. Now, there's no more quaaludes. Why? Because it was killing now people. Now Yeah, well, yeah. And, but now, because they control all that. See, That's not, I love like, when they start saying, like, they're, when they start saying, well, the reason why all these people are coming across the border so big is because they're trying to build up the deck. No, they're trying to push fentanyl through the day borders. And people aren't realizing that that's what it is. I actually have somebody... Uh, in my family, who is an agent, who who has to deal with this stuff all the time, and they keep did I keep you yelling at me saying like, hey, this is this is a real problem, and I can't talk about it. I can't even say the name because I'm not trying to get them fired, but I'm just trying to say like the the real reasons why things happen. Ben Dover. <laughs> ben Dover, yeah. But the real reason why these things are happening is not what people what they're being told by the what they see on fox or cnn or msn you know what i mean like it's like you you laugh and it's like you if you only knew the truth kind of like what i i don't care right like, i don't my time has been served like i'll tell you we wasted so much money in iraq it was a joke 
Oh, yeah. the, 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 the tax dollars that were exploded literally. You know what I mean? That we left over there. They think Afghanistan's bad. You have not a clue oh, what I we actually not. did in Iraq. Yeah. So I'm just like, come on, guys. Stop it. So uh, one of our viewers said that the conversation was fascinating. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, it it thank really you is. I love, I love listening to, to Mouton's stories about how he came to get out of the right screenplay on his story because it, it really is a, a it's, it's surreal. Like you wouldn't imagine just a regular guy a Johnny Depp film. would just be like, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go do this and then rub elbows with the right people. And now he's the possessor of one of the largest Cuban cigar collections in the country. I mean, what, what is the head count on there? Like 8,000? Some, some, some stupid, some stupid. Is. And, and I, I gotta say, there's less to know this person from, from also a, from a cigar dork's perspective. Right, good. I, Come on, bro. I, I, I'm going to try to paint a picture for you guys. You know, John always says that, that my level, my descriptions are always what, what, what makes the, the thing. So if you can imagine what it's like when you are uh, as big as a cigar dork as I am, where you just want to taste everything and taste the best of it all. I mean, look, the money I spend on cigars is obscene. And so when Mouton's like, and he's never given me a red cent. <laughs> it's like, hey man, uh, you know, come meet me at the house. We'll we'll we'll, we'll grab something and we'll go shoot pool or, or whatever. And like I go in his Yeah, I'm kinda of pissed off that I don't even get mentioned in that conversation. Well, you were dying at the time. Oh well. Oh, you dying. want to talk about your pool shooting incident where you were on the floor of Max's <laughs> wax of the floor because you were so drunk? We can talk about that. <laughs> it was that was that, that was, was a fun that night. was a fun day. Anyway, so like, I go and and he's got these, these these Reagan humidors, each one is like four thousand cigars, and they're just like stacked up like you're in the freezer freezer section at Albertsons. And he's like opening them, opens them up, and it's just tray after tray after tray of like the most rare, ridiculous. Like there was one he had; it was the Cal Dorsey Balbec, which was the Lebanese special release, which was supposed to come out with 2018, 2019. 19, 19. But it didn't come out until, what, this year? Oh, they just received it about six weeks ago, and I've been sitting on that cigar since yeah. it was produced. Yeah, so it's like I have the opportunity to pick shit that hasn't even been released to the public. He's like, what are we going to smoke? And I'm always like, oh. This one, this, <laughs> this one. And I was like, ah. And so I remember one time I was like, hey, what's that cigar Michael Jordan likes? <laughs> oh, the Lusitania? And he's the like, the, the party's And I was like, I want that one. And it's just like. Oh, I'm like, nope, you ain't getting it. Those they're all Dude. Grand Reserva, so you can't Oh, have my cigar. God. But, uh, yeah, it's really, you know, for those of you who enjoy cigars, I the, the one thing that I love about cigars is this kind of stuff. Because you can go into a lounge and strike up a conversation, and, you know, you'll be intrigued by whatever that person, whether it pertains to cigars or not, but just to hear, and, and you have this camaraderie, you know, with everybody. And I've got Facebook friends, and I don't even like Facebook, just so you know. Uh, I've had Facebook friends who reach out to me from all over the world and they're like, you know, asking me questions. And it's it's kind of neat because I'm a resource that they trust. And that's a very hard thing to get in a world where everything's counterfeited. How do you how do you and verify dis this veracity? Information everywhere? Huh? Because there's dis and misinformation everywhere. Well, yeah, you know, it's like okay, because so the remember I was talking about the counterfeiter the guy. Yeah. All right, well, this dude's in California. Right, so where does California get all their imports from? China, but he has a plethora of Cuban cigars. I'm well, like, not right now, because the... but but <laughs> right, I'm like, yeah. dude, you're on the other end of the country. So now I do have some friends in California who are legit people. This isn't one of them. But anyway, how do you have thousands of cigars, pallets of boxes? Because I know that's bullshit. There is no way for you to acquire that to begin with, right? There's no way. So how do you have it in an endless supply? Well, they're getting it off the boats in China. In fact, he mistakenly showed me one of the cardboard boxes that the boxes were in with Chinese writing on the side of it. I'm like, dude, at least take it out of the cardboard box with the Chinese writing. <laughs> you know, it's just it's it's just ridiculous. Talk and, about a Wong move. <laughs> he went the Wong way. See, this is this is what I deal with. And you guys, uh, why why do you not laugh all the time? This is why. It's. Anyway, you guys, listen up. In February, hopefully, uh, Cuba will be having the next real Habanos Festival, not a virtual. I wish. And uh, they are going to unleash some amazing cigars. Okay, so that's a nice transition. I'm, I'm almost at the end of mine, so I don't know how much longer we're going to have here. But yeah, I, I do want to... I do I want a birthday waiting. I do want to take mm -hmm. a minute to talk about the Habanos Festival because... <laughs> There's, there's, I don't know if there's really anything like it. In, in America, there are Drew Estate parties and, and Fuente parties and Perdomo travels around doing stuff. There's a lot of interesting cigar events. But 
I don't know of any event which which captures the attention of the world like the Habanos Festival. And when he first told me about it, I was like, what is that? He showed me some videos of it. And I was smit. I, I that is that is one of my next but like the the absolute next bucket list item that I was going on was going to Vegas to watch Dustin fight for a belt. And that is happening. So scratch that one off. But the next one is I want to go to a Habanos festival in Cuba because and tell them why. <laughs> well, the festival lasts, I go for about two weeks when I go, but I really enjoy the gala, which is the dinner. And that's where they do all the auctions. You love the gala? The gala. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said, yeah, gala. I was all like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, sorry. You notice they pull that shit at the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, we so anyways, I'm sorry. But it's it's really nice. And that's where they do the formal presentations. They have all kinds of stuff. I mean, you go to the farms, you go to the plantations, you go sit in the, the you'll meet people, sheiks and, and, and Asian people. And, you know, some of these people, when they when they're at the auction, they're spending one one human door, I would think, went for five point something million dollars for the. It's on it's on YouTube if you guys want to check it out. The Cohiba Humidor, and it's such a beautiful work of art. And just to have that kind of money, of course, the proceeds allegedly go to the Cuban healthcare system. Uh, I don't know whether it does or not. And I frankly don't care. Yeah, hopefully it does. But it's just amazing to see the the talent and the effort and the art that goes into all To elaborate on that, what he's referring to is the auction of humidors. And what they do is they have this this sort of this promenade where they show them all off. And and the buyers can go and touch them and look at them and they open them up and they're full of cigars. And there was the Cohiba one. It was it was designed. The one that I saw was like a golf cart, a golf bag. And like, oh, no, that's nothing. No, you go see the monster one. Yeah, they're, but they're they're all absolutely gorgeous because they're not like what you would think of as a humor down here, where it's like a chest or an armoire or a curio cabinet or 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 like I have one that's a chest. Very very cool stuff. But these these are statues that they find ways to insert trays where you pull them out. You're like, dude, I didn't even realize cigars were in that thing. Right? Absolutely masterful pieces of craftsmanship. They go for auction. Six figure tickets easily. Oh, seven. And then, and seven, then they have uh, they have competitions. They have a long ash competition. Yeah. And they have your roll your own cigar stuff. Then there's all the stuff you get. You know, tell tell them the story about the the guy who got to sit with a very very important person in Cuba. Which one? <laughs> the guy <laughs> Castro. Oh, oh, my friend Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's well, I actually got these three jars from. Uh, Mike is an elder. He may be deceased now. But anyway, when I was living in Florida, I was on Craigslist. Because everybody in Florida had Cuban stuff, right? So I'm like, man, I'm going to go in. Uh, he, he had these jars, and he had them for $100 a piece. And I'm like, I'm rid of Maserati, and I haul ass across the state, and I hang out with him. And he brings them out, and I, I had researched the jars. There's a millennial issue jars. So I was like, Mike. These are worth a lot more than hundred dollars a piece, and he said, "Well, what do you what do you offer me?" I said, "I'll give you hundred fifty dollars a piece." You know, <laughs> just like clear my little conscience, right? And uh, so he says, "Do you need a lighter?" And I should have brought the lighter. So he hands me this big old heavy Zippo lighter, and I said, "Yeah, man, I'll, I'll take it. What do you want for it?" He said, "No, no, I'll just take it." And uh, he said, "You know where I got that lighter?" I said, oh, "This may not tell me." He said, "Well, when I went to the Havana Festival for the Millennium, he says I was the only one there." the gala in a tuxedo and one of Fidel Castro's security people approached me and they asked me if I would consider having uh, joining Fidel at his dinner table he's so he's in his broken Spanish was telling him look I'm, I'm nobody he said well uh, coming down to whatever I want you to have dinner with me. so while sitting there Fidel told him he says um, do you know why I invited you here he says no sir I mean with all respect I'm like, I, like he said I'm nobody right he says, because you showed so much respect in my country. And his security guy that went and got him had that simple lighter. <laughs> Fidel told him, give me your lighter. And he gives it to Mike as a gift. And he says, here, a gift from me, which actually was a security guy. He jacked his own security guy. But I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. So I keep that lighter. Isn't very, that very perfectly cool. illustrative of socialists who are like, I'm so generous. Give it to me. Yeah, give me that. There you go. <laughs> That's my gift to you. Very generous. Of so when he told me that story, I mean, there's no way to verify it, but why would he make something like that up to me? And, uh, the it's guy, a good story. It's a great story, and I love that lighter. And I'll tell you, I mean, it's they still make the lighter today. Yeah. 
But uh, we're gonna have Muta on to tell more stories because he's got some where I'm like, this should be in a Hollywood movie, like the time we with your brother and you get hauled into customs and oh shit, the the plane plane for three hours. Oh, oh, that's a good one. But I told you, it's like a Johnny Depp. It is. It is. You know I mean? it, is it is like blow, but with cigars. Exactly. It's it's absolutely amazing. I'll, I'll bring the the custom stamp when we tell that story. That was that was the reward for all. One thing I wanted to mention before we close yeah, is saying. we are approaching the one year anniversary of GNS. Woo-hoo! I can't believe we stuck around for a year. Uh, I owe everything to our loyal fans, for you guys showing up and participating in the shows. The transition to live shows has been a dream, and we're so excited to do what we do. The growth has been great. We want to do something really special for our one year. I haven't decided what we're going to do, but it's going to be big. It might be... Uh, it might. It might be at your place. I, I'm not really sure, but it's going to be in November because that, that was our, our month where we started. We're going to have a really kick-ass giveaway. I want to see if we can reach 300 subs. We're at 220 right now, so we just got to make up 80. And 300. Damn. 500. If he does 500, if you guys make 500 happen by then, I will personally contribute, you name it, cigar. You heard it, people. You name it. Get it on Other there. than my 500th anniversary. Other Tell your I'm mama. Gonna, Tell your daddy. Share John, the video. John non, non reneged Other than that, but I will personally donate uh, Lee Top Cuban cigar in my collection, which is valued about two thousand dollars. And John will smoke it naked. No, we'll make it. John still got to rig this in his favor now. <laughs> Before you like, <laughs> unbelievable. Listen, listen um, I, 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 I have to thank you. You guys that don't have a clue. Like this is smoking something like this is like. It's like going to see Dustin win a belt. You know what I mean? It's something you have to experience firsthand. There really is nothing like it. I mean, I- Thank you so much. We got people driving by just seeing. They know where we're at. <laughs> What's up? Um, uh, thank you so much for, for letting us you know, enjoy this. Yeah. I, thank I, you for educating our community. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, thank you for seriously uh, educating our community. We know we're competing with the NFL right now, and you know there's a lot of football games going on, right? But we still have a good number of people that are here wanting to learn and understand. They're probably watching the game and us at the same exact time. Well, they can watch this after the game or whatever. And that's what I want to kind of mention. Like, go back. I know we had audio problems in the first half, but listen, the education that you're getting from this man is bar none. You, 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 you. That's why we want you to tune in. It really is something special. And, and you yeah. know, I, I talk to a lot of people, and I'm friends with people overseas who get access to Cuban cigars, and, and, and Muton's a guy as far as, like, knowing everything. You know, it, and, and, and I'm a Spurg, which means, like, I pick up on all kinds of little details. And so when he yeah. when he tells me things like, oh, this guy posted a picture of this cigar trying to say it was this, and I was like, dude, that band wasn't made in that year. And I'm like, dude, that's that's so impressive how he knows all of that that, that minutiae that would, that would yeah. be able to discern, like, no, that's bogus versus that's real. And I, I'm, I'm, I've been wanting to share that knowledge with you guys for a while. So I'm really grateful that you were able to come on our show. And yeah. I, I thank you for, for doing it. And, and the cigars were, I mean, you know, look, he knows that the pyramid is actually my jam. And whenever, whenever he just gives me a choice, I'm going to say, I mean, I got the license plate on my car. I got the hat. I mean, I, I got, I got a Cohiba collection with my 50th anniversary ashtray my special cutters and my torches and my box of vehicles like everything that i've got i've learned and i've got it from him and so i i can't wait to have him on again not only to see what amazing sick dick we're going to smoke next time but what other stories we'll be able to tell uh there's so much information i just wanted to wet everybody's palate to get them wanting more and being more interested in learning about cuban cigars because while i am as as non-communist as they get i can still appreciate the good work that the people of cuba do and I want to see them thrive, and, and I have no problem going and, and supporting them. Yes, and, and with that being said, <clears throat> feel free to make all the comments you want, especially about what you'd like to see, so that we can go ahead and put together a series of shows for you guys in an oh, organized nice. fashion. Yeah, and without peace. And this was just kind of an introductory thing, trying to talk about it, but it's it's quite intriguing and uh, very educational. And uh, like I said, Cuba's opened up starting tomorrow. Get your plane tickets. And you can rest assured, when we finally do make it to Cuba, we're going to put together some amazing content for you guys. And uh, I don't even know what we're going to do for Vegas, but I'm excited. It's going to be amazing. And one last thing I wanted to say is Cuba is a communist government, but they're also kind of socialist. In other words, there's private home ownership and private business ship there, business ownership as well. So when you go there, spend your money with the private 
the, the private sector. You know, yeah, they need it. They're really suffering. Big private sector of, of young ladies <laughs> doing what they can to get ahead. This guy. So oh, make sure if you go. Um, They're entrepreneurs. Uh, <laughs> So it's a dangerous place. Make sure you have an escort. It is not a dangerous place. I've walked around it, but of course, I always walk around with one of the biggest Cubans on the planet. But uh, it's only dangerous because of the infrastructure. Infrastructure. So be very careful if you do go there, walk around at night. <laughs> yeah. That reminds me of another story I want you to tell about when you were there and they tried to pad your bill to take advantage of you. But that will be reserved for another time. It's Fucking great story. We man. probably ought to save that one to the end. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll save that for such a good one. But but we're gonna be back next week. We're gonna be doing more stuff. Yep. So with that being said, I'm John Welsh and I'm the gentleman. And I'm Alex Stanford. I'm the scholar. And on behalf of our cigar aficionado from Cuba, Andre Mouton, keep it smoky. Always. God bless. Burp, 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 burp.